politics and elections can sometimes appear to be a zero-sum game. And so given the difficulty in forging true democracy in the face of these pressures, it's no surprise that some argue the future favors the strong man, a top-down model, rather than strong democratic institutions. But I believe this thinking is wrong. I believe the road of true democracy remains the better path. I believe that in the 21st century, economies can only grow to a certain point until they need to open up because entrepreneurs need to access information in order to invent. Young people need a global education in order to thrive. Independent media needs to check the abuses of power. Without this evolution, ultimately expectations of people will not be met. Suppression and stagnation will set in. And history shows that strong men are then left with two paths. Permanent crackdown, which sparks strife at home, or scapegoating enemies abroad, which can lead to war. Now, I will admit, my belief that governments serve the individual and not the other way around is shaped by America's story. Our nation began with a promise of freedom that applied only to the few, but because of our democratic constitution, because of our Bill of Rights, because of our ideals, ordinary people were able to organize and march and protest, and ultimately, those ideals won out. Open doors for women and minorities and workers in ways that made our economy more productive and turned our diversity into a strength. That gave innovators the chance to transform every area of human endeavor. That made it possible for someone like me to be elected President of the United States. So yes, my views are shaped by the specific experiences of America, but I do not think this story is unique to America. Human ingenuity now gives us the capacity to feed the hungry and give all of our children, including our girls, the education that is the foundation for opportunity in our world. But we have to put our money where our mouths are. And we can only realize the promise of this institution's founding to replace the ravages of war with cooperation if powerful nations, like my own, accept constraints. Sometimes I'm criticized in my own country for professing a belief in international norms and multilateral institutions. But I am convinced that in the long run, giving up some freedom of action not giving up our ability to protect ourselves or pursue our core interests, but binding ourselves to international rules over the long term enhances our security. As President of the United States, I know that for most of human history, power has not been unipolar. And the end of the Cold War may have led too many to forget this truth. I've noticed as President that at times both America's adversaries and some of our allies believe that all problems were either caused by Washington or could be solved by Washington. And perhaps too many in Washington believe that as well. <laughs> My own family is made up of the flesh and blood and traditions and cultures and faiths from a lot of different parts of the world. Just as America has been built by immigrants from every shore. And in my own life, in this country, and as President, I have learned that our identities do not have to be defined by putting someone else down but can be enhanced by lifting somebody else up. 
that they don't have to be defined in opposition to others, but rather by a belief in liberty and equality and justice and fairness. And the embrace of these principles as universal doesn't weaken my particular pride, my particular love for America. It strengthens it. My belief that these ideals apply everywhere doesn't lessen my commitment to help those who look like me or pray as I do or pledge allegiance to my flag. But my faith in those principles does force me to expand my moral imagination and to recognize that I can best serve my own people. I can best look after my own daughters by making sure that my actions seek what is right for all people and all children and your daughters and your sons. This is what I believe, that all of us can be co-workers with God. And our leadership and our governments and this United Nations should reflect this irreducible truth. Thank you very much.